Tehri Hydro Development Corporation is created to build the world's fifth highest dam and India's largest. This hydropower project will harness the potential of the river Bhagirathi to provide invaluable power and water, spurring India into self-reliance and economic prosperity. has always been a source of life, a harbinger of wealth. Her story is entwined with our past and linked to our present. Legend has it that many million years ago, during King Sagar's reign, famine and flood took thousands of lives. The next three generations prayed to the goddess Ganga to descend and resurrect the dead. It was King Bhagirath, known for his piety, who succeeded in persuading the difficult goddess. But, said she, when I descend, the earth will shatter. Only Lord Shiva can temper the fury of my fall. For a whole century, King Bhagirath prayed to Lord Shiva, who finally granted him his wish. And so, Mother Ganga descended to earth her torrential force tamed by Shiva's swirling locks, creating in effect the world's first natural dam. India, today, 150 million Indians sit in darkness. 40% are below the poverty line. Only 28% of our land is irrigated. 38% lacks a regular supply of water. Thousands succumb to flood and famine annually. How then can we hope to feed a thousand million by the turn of the century? cry is real. Today's call to the Mother Ganga is as strident as it was many centuries ago. Hydro Development Corporation exemplifies an ideal. High technology liaising with nature to harness a resource as old as the mountains, as old as time. The project will provide 2,400 megawatts of electricity, which is pollution-free, inexpensive and renewable. 
The water from the reservoir will irrigate 45,000 hectares of land, thereby doubling the productivity of the Indo-Gangetic Plain. It will also provide 300 cusacks of drinking water to Delhi. Fisheries, tourist trade, and rural industries will be given a much needed impetus. The dam is being set up at the confluence of the rivers Bhagirathi and Bilangana, optimizing the hydro potential of both. Its essential design is in four parts. A 260.5 meter high Rockville dam, an underground powerhouse with an installed capacity of 2,000 megawatts, consisting of a hydropower plant of 1,000 megawatts and a pump storage plant of another 1,000 megawatts with reversible turbine sets that will pump the water back into the reservoir at non-peaking hours, thereby conserving valuable electricity. A 103.5 meter high concrete dam at Koteshwar that lies 22 kilometers downstream of Terry will generate an additional 400 megawatts. An 800 kilovolt transmission system, the first in India, will be laid from Derry to Meerut. Four head race tunnels will channel the water into a large chamber deep into the mountain womb, where lies the powerhouse. Here, the water will gush via vertical pipes into a turbine with overhead generators. The water is caught in the specially designed blades of the turbine. It takes a full circle before pouring into an opening at the center of the revolving turbine. The water will now meet the river Bhagirathi on the other side of the dam. The reservoir ensures a continuous generation of water at peaking capacity. The earlier schedule envisaged commissioning of the entire complex by 1999. Since the project works were handed over to THDC in June 1989, progress has been rapid. The completion schedule has been advanced by three years to 1996. The dedication and commitment of the THDC management has made this possible. The infrastructure and support systems have been set up. Four head race tunnels, 8.5 meters in diameter, are ready. These lead to a 20 meter high chamber which will house the power station. The added tunnels, which are the main vehicle approach routes to the power stations, are also ready. The river Bhagirathi is being diverted through two right bank diversion tunnels on to the other side of the mountain. At its exit point, dredging of the riverbed is in progress. diverted, the construction of an 81 meter high copper dam is to be completed before the monsoons. It will ultimately be incorporated into the main dam. Grouting or laying the foundation 10 meters under the level of the riverbed has been completed. This is being filled with rocks and boulders to be leveled out by vibrators. This fill material is being excavated from a nearby quarry. A wide valley leading to a narrow gorge makes this an ideal location for the dam. Keeping in mind the rate of sedimentation and siltation, the life of the dam will be at least a hundred years. The benefits of large dams are many. The drawbacks inevitable. The reservoir will cover 42 square kilometers of the Garhwal Valley, 
displacing 4,250 families fully and 5,550 partially. Out of the 400 crores that have been spent so far, 100 crores has been spent on rehabilitation alone. Only 10% of the villagers who fall within the submergence area await rehabilitation. Sitting 1.5 kilometers from the dam site, old Terry Town has yet to move. For its 3,500 families, a new town is being designed and developed by the internationally renowned firm of architects, DKS. Known for their environmentally sensitive structures, they bring a multidisciplinary approach to the project. These, these valleys. So our job as a multidisciplinary team of professionals is to provide or create human settlements which are environmentally sensitive and have the least negative impact, provide a comfortable living environment, and are not expensive to build. We are going into detailed investigations of the areas which we identify development. The green area is the one that we will not build on, whereas the yellow area is the one that where the development will take place. I think towns can't be sold. The, the, the people just have to believe that when they leave their old town and come to a new place, that they are coming to a better environment. See, the old Tiri town has sort of developed naturally over, over years at the confluence of the two rivers. This town is going to be designed. So there is a difference, and the people have their roots there, so they are apprehensive, that is understandable. But in terms of amenities that are being planned, in terms of, uh, for instance, <coughs> communication network, the roads, the schools, the educational facilities, water supply, the electricity, all of these are going to be the most modern facilities. So in terms of conveniences and the infrastructure which will be available, both physical and social, uh, the new Tiri town will have far more amenities than uh, they exist in the old town. Poverty, the biggest taint on the environment. In maintaining traditional lifestyles at the cost of development, we run the risk of creating reservations, of freezing time, of curbing progress. This is anathema to a modern society. The townspeople of Old Terry offer diverse opinions at their proposed upheaval. Old must yield to the new, the past to the morrow. Any significant artifacts and historical monuments existing at Old Terry Town will be moved to New Terry Town where a huge area has been earmarked for a museum. ये घर छोड़ने के दुख न हो इसके लिए हम ये प्रयास कर रहे हैं कि उनको इतनी सुविधा और सुख दिए जाएं और उनको इस तरह से बचाया जाए कि उनको ये दुख जो है वो इस दुख को जल्दी भूल जाएं। Six sites in and around the Dehradun district have been identified for resettlement. In a phased rehabilitation program, no effort is spared to keep intact the social and economic fabric of their existences. Those resettled have received a minimum compensation of two acres each. Landless scheduled castes, tribes and laborers have also been given two acres. <laughs> Sundar Singh Negi and his family are among the first settlers at Bhaniawala. They were given two acres of land and money to build their homes. <laughs> 